forgotten man in Bethlehem. But there was also somebody else they overlooked in Bethlehem. A thousand years later, here he comes. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Tis Christ the Lord. And so this David who was overlooked and undervalued was the same lineage that my Savior came through. So for every person that has ever felt overlooked, undervalued, perhaps your gifts and callings were lost on people who had more resources, more degrees, and better pedigree. God has a purpose for your life. You can't sneak into the earth. You have to be spoken into the earth. And if God spoke you, you got a purpose. And if you got a purpose, you're going to live it out and you will not return to him void. That's what number eight is about. Because I shouldn't be here talking to you. I should be somewhere in a grave, but because God had a purpose for my life, he snatched me out where other young men didn't make it out, and now I get to tell people that Jesus can work it out. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now in the book, because you, you, you only got, this is not Oprah, so we, we don't have an hour. Hey, this is not Dr. Phil. We got just so much time. Yes, sir. Our viewers, they love to help people and totally change their lives. So we've got limited time, but you poured a lot in this book. Yes, sir. So if people go to the bookstore, go online and order it and get it, what, what do you want to happen in their life? What do you want them to get out of it? Because, you know, you, you've had some pretty rough things. You were yeah. abused when you were a little boy. Yeah, I was 40 It has a terrible effect. You've been through a lot, and you know people are going through a lot. What do you want them to get out of the book? You know that every negative experience, everything that the enemy has thrown was actually preparation for purpose. When I was abused at four years old, not by family members, two teenage boys from the neighborhood, one stood by while the other did this awful thing, it was on the front lawn of my home. My mother was inside the house. Cars were driving past. No one stopped. And for years, I didn't tell anyone. And I remember saying I was going to tell my mother. And the, the, the teenage guy said, he said, if you tell, you'll be the one who gets in trouble. And so I kept this thing that happened inside for until I was 19, maybe. And I realized that the enemy loves secrets. He loves, he loves to keep things in the dark. That's why Jesus is the light of the world. And when the light of the Holy Spirit gets in those dark places, it shows you that the enemy was a liar from the beginning. And that what happened in my childhood does not have to inform my destiny. Even though it was sent to cause me to question my worth, my value, and my identity, what happened is that my mother introduced me to Jesus and I made him my savior at seven years old. So what the enemy sent as a seed actually became a foundation. And so now, what he meant for bad, God meant for good. And so where I didn't have a father growing up, now I have my own children. I can build a legacy. And where I didn't see a good marriage, now I can begin to break those curses and chains. What this book is about is saying all of the negative things that have happened in your life were not God sentencing you to pain. He was trusting you with it. Wow. Mm. You can be trusted with pain. You can be trusted with treasure. Because the treasure comes from the pain. It comes from the process. Wow. And this book is to encourage people in their walk that there, God doesn't waste pain. And there are no forgotten lives. And that as believers, it doesn't mean that we won't struggle. But our faith is the filter through which we see uh, our struggles and our pain. The lens of the cross clarifies why I had to go through what I went through. And it's not just for me, it's for the people that are connected to me. So when I say I am number eight, I'm just declaring that I'm a new beginning and I'm something new in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation. I have value. I have purpose. I have identity. And I can bring value. But most people didn't see that. But that's the power of God just anointing you in front of the folk that thought they knew you. You go from anonymous to necessary in one moment. You go from what's your name again to we've been expecting you in one moment. You go from the kid that was opening at the art conference at Gateway to sitting with Pastor James and Betty on life today. Don't tell me what God won't do. I, uh, I look at this, you know, my, own, my own childhood. I, uh, I didn't have a father. Most people know, you know, the product of a forced relationship on a hospice nurse and she got pregnant at 40 and had me at 41 because the doctor wouldn't abort me and then I grew up in real extreme poverty but one of the things that happened in that pain was I saw pain I saw hurt I saw people that were overlooked and when I found my way to the mission fields of the world after preaching to the big crowds and coliseums and stadiums and seeing you know literally millions of people come to Christ 
when I went over and saw the overlooked in the third world countries and primarily in Africa, I asked the Lord if he wanted me to stay there and, and uh, the missionaries encouraged me, please don't. It wasn't that they didn't you know, like me and they liked us. But they said, if you go back and tell the people that watch you on television to help us and keep us here, then we won't have to spend a lot of our time trying to get support. You could keep us here wow. and, and make us effective. We came back to do it, and I didn't know if people would help, but, but amazingly they did. And I've been doing this two or three years, and I got a call from Joel's dad. And this is when Joel was still back doing cameras yeah, and back behind the scenes, you know. He had no clue. He's like, you. he had no clue. I mean, he, he just like you. He would never believe he'd be where he is. Yes, sir. And that might have everybody around him didn't, and probably his own family didn't. But Joel's dad, John, called me. And I had preached for him at Lakewood, and he'd, he'd known my journey. He knew, knew what was going on, and he watched God stretch me. And he really blessed me, but he called me. He said, I need to tell you, James, you and Betty something. He said, I'm a mission-minded pastor, and I want to thank you, and I want to thank Betty. You have brought the mission fields of the world and the missionaries into our homes wow. all over America. And he said, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you, James, you and Betty. And you know what, John, that's the truth. We have allowed the world to see the compassion of God through missionaries that literally place their lives in the midst of indescribable suffering and pain. They marched into hell for a heavenly cause. Yes. And and it's a joy for these people to undergird them. And isn't it wonderful that God gives all of us that opportunity? And it was out of my own pain that I could better identify with the pain of others Absolutely. and reach out and touch it with the love of God because of people like in this studio and people watching us all over the world. I think that that is the calling of the gospel for all of us, that we have a mission field, a local mission field, but we also support the spreading of the gospel throughout all the world. And when you have gone through pain and tragedy, you empathize with those who don't have resources, who don't have clean drinking water, who don't have uh, proper housing. And when we have been given so much, I believe it is the calling of God and the mandate of the church for us to extend. This was the book of Acts, that we had all things common and distributed to each one as they had need, and the church grew daily. You like this? Is God giving this man a gift? You know what I believe? Uh, I believe our daughter Robin. Baby, my daughter Robin. I believe she's watching. I believe sometimes she says, that's good, Dad. <laughs> but you know who else I saw watching just now? This is this I just saw it. I saw Martin Luther King looking down at you. Hallelujah. And he said, that man can communicate. Wow. Do you agree he's got a gift from God to communicate with power? It is a supernatural gift. Wow. I saw it only the first time you came here doing more entertainment and having fun, but I saw you when you stood on that platform, and I watched you when you were more of an MC. but all of a sudden, in that moment, God just flowed through you like a river. And I remember saying, dear God in heaven, what have you given us? And John, God gave me a love for you and a prayer for you. And I got to be honest with you, boy, he lifted you up and put you in a place. And Joel, uh, you know, just listen to me a minute. I sure love you. And I want you to know you poured God's grace all over this very worthy man to receive it. Because this man will release the river that flows in freely to all people. And I really believe that's what you want to do. This is what everybody in the body of Christ should do. Just release the life and the love of God freely like a river. And I thank you, Joel. Thank you so much. Would you just say thanks so much to God and thank you to John Gray.